So here on the table, I have set up the Tumbletown uh, playmat that you can purchase separately from the game. But of course, it has such wonderful art that I could not not play this game without showing it off to everyone. And then we have the dice. I've pulled out the dice based on solo mode. Now, this the mode I'll be playing is actually called the Solo Survey, Surveyor Solo Variant. The Soul Surveyor Solo Variant. Say that five times fast without uh, twisting your tongue. Uh, so in this one, it's basically the same setup as uh, it talks about through the main rule book. But there's a few extra dice that are returned to the box. And then uh, instead of running an extra AI character, essentially, you just take one extra die, a uh, brown die to the side, which we'll be rolling each round. And what we roll determines what we do with it, uh, with the board state. Now, I have not flipped over the cards because typically there's going to be four cards in each row right here, but I wanted to show off the, the artwork on the map first before we get into this. Uh, so overall, this is a kind of engine building style game, special manipulation with our uh, player map down here. I'm, I'll be playing the Dueling Streets version. There's an actually an easy, a hard Dueling Streets and I believe one other one. So there's multiple modes you can play. Uh, depending on how difficult you want it to be. But I figured I'd try the dueling streets. Uh, we have our storehouse over here shows how many dice we can hold at a time. Beginning of the solo variant mode, we actually start with two brown ones, but we have to roll them first, which we get to do in this fun little dice tower that comes with the game itself. You punch it out, assemble it, and it fits right into the game box. So we're gonna be starting with a four and a six right there. And then we'll get these set up. So these are going to be three different levels of buildings that we'll, we can build. Uh, and they show uh, with the number of cactuses on the card themselves. So each of these rows should have four cards flipped face up next to the stack. And we start to cover our artwork on the wonderful game mat. But it's also spaced out to show you exactly where you can lay everything including all of these different dice colors because they have little circle spots for those dice okay so each game we also get a randomly dealt horse card um, so I've done that for myself this game and I ended up with uh, Nevia V, who at the end of the game, I will earn one point per uh, building I make that has a pickaxe symbol on it. Uh, so typically this is a secret objective if you're, if you're playing multiplayer. But in this case, uh, might as well tell everyone because I'm not trying to hide it from you, of course. So I'll go with that. Uh, but on the front of it, it does have our first dice manipulation power which we can earn more the more buildings we make. This was basically a once per round ability. And in this case, it's either add a plus one or minus one to any one die once per round. So all the base horses have that same ability, no matter which symbol is on the back of it for your secret objective. Now let's confirm. So overall, we'll be trying to build uh, buildings from here, each giving us additional powers or, or potentially more dice. And then the end game, it will be triggered once two of these uh, basically piles of dice, which are, are resources for buildings, are down to two or less in two different piles. So, solo mode, it's basically just um, kind of the same as a regular game, and each turn you're going to take pick one of these cards from here. You're going to pull it down to, to in front of yourself, and depending on which row you select the dice from, or the card from, you get actually dice as well. Uh, this bottom row right here, you get two brown dice, and then one dice of choice of black, gray, or brown, 
middle row currently would give one black and then two of choice of black, gray, or brown. If you select from the top row, you get one gold and then two of choice of any of the four color dice. Now these are all critical choices as each of these buildings has certain die colors and, and numbers on the dice that, you, that you'll need to build those buildings along your main street. Now you can use dice that don't match the color and number, but you get uh, negative chits, basically negative points at the end of the game. So you, I try to avoid those if possible. And then our main street with the dueling streets, um, it only sh it's only showing symbols along one side of the street. Let me show you one of the other ones to show that it's actually two sides of the street. Uh, so you can see here along the bottom and then the top of the street. Just the dueling street just gives you one rule that indicates how you can score at the end of the game based on the other side of the street. So we can score points in this game either by how we place dice buildings onto our street uh, matching if it shows a color you want the base of the building at that location to be that color to gain a point at the end of the game. If it shows a certain height of say two or three dice stacked, you want the building in that location to be that height to score an additional point at the end. You can also gain a point for having a single space between two buildings, uh, basically creating an alleyway. And then in, for this card right here, it says this side only, so the top of the street uh, height and first level of die color that are different from placed uh, place die directly across from the street. So in this case, say I put something on this side, I want it completely different over here. Uh, so the dueling streets, you just don't want it to match across, across the street from each other. Um, let's see, any other rules I need to hit on? Uh, anytime we gain die, we immediately roll them, and then we can try to manipulate them with our abilities, be it our horse or other buildings we've already made to get them to the numbers we need. We can also trade in die, uh, certain good die, uh, either matching numbers or matching colors uh, for a different die. And let's see. Because of the Soul Survivor mode, each round after we, after we go, we'll roll this one die. Based on the number, we move a certain column of cards. Uh, so it kind of helps cycle the, the building cards out of the way. If you're playing uh, with multiple players, you have this cactus first player token. Just wanted to show it off, but no need to use it in the solo mode. And in the solo mode, 11 of these cards were used for each uh, level uh, randomly selected from the full set of cards for each level that the game comes with. So let's just get this started and see what we can do with it. Uh, of course, we've already start, we already have our two brown dice, a four and a six, so potentially finding a building that we can play the, uh, those dice into will help us out, so we have to manipulate them as little as possible. There's always a decent idea, and looking at the powers that those buildings allow when we get them combined with the secret objective symbol we have on here. Uh, it's helpful for what we want to build next and then eventually as we start to build the buildings at the top those are other scoring options we can add on to the score as well. Uh, let's see so considering my symbol is the uh, pickaxe and the pink I'm already seeing a tannery and a well that both uh, meet that, helpfully. Uh, three points for the tannery or two points for the well. Now the tannery just wants all three dice to be different numbers uh, based on the symbol at the top of it. I think that would be pretty easy to do. So with my two brown already that I know are different. I'm going to select this card, so I pull it down here to the left of my horse, basically saying I can't use the power at the bottom until I've built it, but I can use the horsepower in anything I've built already to manipulate. So because I've selected from this row, I get two brown dice, 
and then one of choice, which I know I need a gray die to complete this building. So I'm going to immediately roll all those dice. From here, go ahead and set them by my card to show what I have to build with. Now this is pretty straightforward. I know I have that four, so I don't want to use this four brown, but using any of these other ones would be just as helpful. I'm going to use the six and the two. Now, I've decided this because if I decide I want to build the outhouse in a moment, it wants numbers three through five. So I already have the three and four ready for that. And that would give me another die immediately once I do that. So I can build up my dice reserve for bigger buildings later down the road. So to build this, uh, this is stacked three high. Uh, two browns on the bottom and then the gray on top. So I'm going to take these three die, stack them as shown on the card, and then put them in anywhere on my street. Now, they don't have to go on a spot that matches the height or the color, but you can get additional points if you do uh, match them. So, let's see. To make it easier on myself, I'm going to put this down at the end uh, where it wants a brown on the base, which this building is brown on the base. Now, because I've built that, you take your card and slide it to the right of your horse. And if it had a gray ability at the bottom, that would trigger immediately. Brown, you can trigger once per round now. So I could still decide, hey, I want to change any dice I have plus or minus one. And this symbol now allows me to reroll any one die. Or is it one die or as many as I want? I will verify that. Wait, no, that's the flip a die symbol. So I could flip a die completely upside down. So it tops it aside. So this symbol on the well is the reroll symbol. So, and then after you've selected a card, you're going to flip over a new one. And then because I'm playing the Soul Survivor solo variant, I will roll uh, a Surveyor dice. Uh, it's a six. So when you roll a six, we do nothing. Now, if we had a rolled a one through four, they are the four columns you'd remove cards from. So with that, uh, since nothing happened, I just go to drawing my next card. Uh, building my buildings up in the same way. Uh, we've set up ourselves for the outhouse if we wanted to, but we also want to look ahead. So say potentially we want to do the uh, town hall later. That's going to be a lot of black dice and some brown. So we could use this right here that would start getting us some brown. We can go ahead and grab a black if we complete it. That's another black one, so in the next turn we can grab a lot of black to work on the town hall. Uh, which I think is a pretty decent, uh, quick idea right now. Now we do have to mind how many dice we start using too fast, because as soon as we have two of these piles to two or less, it triggers endgame. So I'm going to take that card. Again, we get two brown. And then one of choice, which we said would be black, immediately roll in. We've got a two, four, and a five right here. Now again, the outhouse wants numbers three through five, so it can be any number, three, four, or five, when you see that row of numbers. And so we have several of those choices, but I also want to look ahead of, if we're going to think about the town hall, they all need to be different numbers. And the black's going to be a 4 already, so we want to use up this 4, because that's a matching number. If possible, and then we know we have abilities as well. So what I might do, I'm just going to use the 5, it won't make a huge difference. So I'm going to uh, build that. It's too high. 
and then the opposite side of my dual link streets uh, one point height and first level die color that are different from place direct die directly across from it so that means we don't want uh, direct across from this one right here to be three tall or brown base so I'm going to avoid doing that and let's do it this way um, well I know I'm likely to put gold over here so brown across from it would be safe I'm actually going to do it here test myself out and go for broke because it shows gray and it shows a one here so if I can get that one to trigger later that's already an opposite so since I've built that and it's a gray uh, power at the bottom that's immediately gain a dice It'll be either black, gray, or brown. We decide it's going to be black already. I'm going to roll it. Uh, there we go. Okay, five. So that's that's good. That's going to help us out because it's already a different number. I'm going to fill this in. And then hope that the surveyor dice does not roll a two and take out the town hall we've planned for. It. And of course I had to say it. It rolled a two. So now that whole, whole column is removed discarded out of the way we get more cards and I'm gonna have to change what I was planning so that surveyor dice is a way that cycles these cards sometimes in your favor sometimes not but what I can let's see what I can do now well I got two black already and two brown now the Mercantile uh, uh, uses four black. I could easily pick up two more black. It'd have to be sets of two, two different sets of matching numbers. Now, again, that does not match the pickaxe that we're trying to gain for our horse. Uh, the printing house. Again, a, sh a shoe horse, and it doesn't match. They have to be even. I'd have to use some powers to flip things around. It's just trade a dice style power. But because the base of that allows it to be uh, colors of your choice. But that wouldn't be that I could probably see the livery stable just once odds gives me a lot allows me to change two different dice every round I also want to start looking at the scoring bonuses up top so I've built uh, basically I have tall cactus short cactus bush in a barrel already for scoring. I've built a two tall and a three tall. So, land office wants uh, one height buildings. Bank likes three height. The church likes a combination of all four symbols for points. That would be the hardest to do since I already have three of them. It'd be a span of three wide. I could probably build that later I don't have to build at this moment plan ahead maybe I'll just hope it stays there and plan ahead by getting some green uh, boot symbols as well so post office uh, let's see it uses brown four through six I'd have to use a foot power plus or minus power Get the two browns I already have there. Well, it's to convert gray to brown and black dice. I have been using more brown dice already, so converting to brown won't be as great because that's going to use up brown faster. 
blacksmith wants sets of gray and opens up my storehouse option. How does that fit on my street though? Because that would meet if I complete the blacksmith. I think it gives me the dice and opens up storehouse. Yep. Now let's try it because it at least has the symbol we need for bonus scoring. So because it's this row, I'm gonna just gonna take three gray and immediately roll them. We got a two, three, and a four. And then what I'm going to do, because at any time you're allowed to trade two dice of the same color for something of another. So I'm going to take two brown, since I've used the most brown so far. Trade those in for a gray die. Immediately roll it. Got a three. Okay. That helps us a lot because what I can do, I can flip, use my tannery once to flip my two over to five and then use the horse to minus one to make it a four. So now I have two set, two different sets. Because you want this AA BB means you want a set of one number and then a different set of a different number. So now I can build this pretty easily. So I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create an alleyway. This, so I'm going to use, make use of two of these three good spots right here. Actually, uh, well, I'm going to do it this way. Same points either way. Because uh, this one's too high. This one's one high, and that one's gray base. So now I'm guaranteed to score for all three of those right there. I could have also scooted it one over, done the two high over here, scored for a point for the alleyway between. Uh, but I want to leave a little bit more space open on this side for bigger buildings, potentially. Uh, because I completed the blacksmith, I immediately move it over to this other side uh, this means I get one of each of those three dice and uh, more storage options. I got a one, two, and a three. So now, now that can all get stored there. Now what I'm going to do to make it easier to see, uh, this gave me more storage. So I'm going to try to put it right here in view. So now instead of six, I can hold nine dice at once. Which can be a little bit stronger in a multiplayer game where there's a lot more dice out on the board and you have a little bit more time. In this, the dice can run out a bit fast if you're not paying attention uh, and keeping a balance. See, because right now we already have one color that's down to two. Remember, if we have two of these down to two or less, that's in game. I'm going to roll the surveyor die again, so four this time. Uh, it wipes this column. Okay, so let's see what came up now for us. Now the schoolhouse points for two height, now which we have two of. Uh, points for one height at the land office. Still thinking the church might be the easiest one to achieve and get points for. So if I grab that now, I can take two, all well, three golds, trade in blacks for another gold, keep my gray. And I need the total to be greater than 24 on all of the dice. So I'll have some time to manipulate them as well. And then I can also 
aim to potentially place it uh, down at this end of the street. Gold base too high, scoring at least two of those spots. And then I could potentially build a single wide outhouse or tannery down in the middle, even though it wouldn't score for the black base, it would score two alleys. And then get me more symbols. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go for the church now. Um, so I get a gold and choice of any of the four colors for the other two, so I'm going to take all gold. Roll them all. Got four, five, six this time. I'm going to put them up here so we can see them all. And then I was going to trade in two blacks. Uh, because of part of this power that you can always do is trade in two of the same color for one of a different color. Two blacks for gold. That's a four. Okay, so let's see what our total is right now. Because we want greater than 24. Uh, 4 plus 5, 9 plus 6, 15 plus 4 is 19, plus 3 is 22 on those 5 dice. So we just really need to change it by 2, which won't be that hard to do. Because I can use my tannery power to change the 3 to a 4 by flipping it over. I uh, use my horse to plus one, and it won't really matter which one I do it to, so I'm going to plus it to the five, and now we can add this up. Four plus six is ten plus six, sixteen plus four is uh, twenty, plus four is twenty-four, and as long as we're greater than or equal to twenty-four, we can build the church. So we can go and build that now without waiting, so we know we'll be scoring that at the end. Like discussed, I plan to put it here the end of the town, uh, end of my street. And now that also gives us better reference what we, can, what we should build across the street. Now this does not give an immediate or ongoing effect power, and so it's just an in-game scoring option. But what we have done, uh, since it's for a set of symbols um, of the pickaxe, boot, hat, and horseshoe, we already have two horseshoes, we have a pickaxe, and we have a hat. So as long as we get a boot, we can score that once for six points. Plus, um, if we grab the other symbols again, which we already have a pickaxe from our blacksmith as well. So we actually have two axes, two horseshoes. So if we get two boots and a hat, we can actually score the church twice. So if we start focusing on that, we'll be good. Which my immediate thought is I already see the outhouse has a boot and a hat. So first we need to roll these surveyor dice. Uh, row three, so it's going to take, uh, no, sorry, not row, column three. Takes those out. I'll move on to my next round now. Um, so we talked about, like I said, I want the outhouse. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's going to help me score my church more. I can potentially build it across the street for stuff. So it gives me multiple options as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, like a, I get two brown dice and then choice. So again, I want to look ahead of other things I want to make. So I know I'm going to need at least one more boot. And one of my buildings, uh, what's on my building so far? Two, so the schoolhouse later on wouldn't be bad. Uh, which is going to need some gold and black. So I think I'm going to take a black as well right now. now this outhouse needs two through fours brown dye which we got exactly what we need with these threes and we already had a two so I'm going to use threes because thinking ahead if we try to do the schoolhouse 
I want a, a total less than or equal to eight, so I'm going to keep that two. Well, no, the, two, the one for the black is really good for us, actually. Sorry. The two we can't use on it. So this outhouse single tall, and I'm not likely to find a black base building single tall. Well, it doesn't have to be single tall, but what I can do, that mercantile building might work later, or the printing house. So I'm going to try to build this across the street. Now, remember, we want the opposite sides of the street to both be a different height and color than what we've currently built, if possible, to score. Now, I also like to attempt to score alleys as much as possible. So that means brown base down here, we probably don't want brown don't want to do brown across but this is too tall so we don't want to do it there this is one tall and gray so we could do it side by side there but again it gives gives a point but no alley point so it's kind of doesn't matter I could build way down here but it leaves an open spot at the end uh, I'll go and do that to guarantee a point across and then I can see what else fits uh, that schoolhouse. I think I could get that to fit. So we'll try. Uh, because we completed that, that gives us an immediate bonus of one of choice of brown, gray, or black. We're going to take another black since we have more of those left. Immediately roll. That's a three. No, I still haven't used a flip or plus one, minus one this round. So I also want to think ahead if I'm going to build one of these other ones again. Okay, because now we have boot hat. I'll put some of these together so I can look at my symbols real quick. So that's a set. Uh, I'm going to need another boot. So the tannery is okay. I probably could have taken a brown die. It's fine. Um, but I do need at least one more boot. If I try to build the town hall, it uses a lot of black, which I've already started to do. I have non equal already. It's a boot and another set to start on. Okay. So town Hall and Schoolhouse seem to be my next best options. Th trying to think ahead. Um, okay, so, so I don't want to change any of those because the Town Hall wants them all different, which they are right now, so we're good. Surveyor says number four. So, Schoolhouse is out. what the hotel means is that just it may just mean that per number of, for every two dice oh it's three points for every pair of dice in your storehouse okay well I'd have to that wouldn't be the worst thing to do after I build things. Use a turn or two to just grab dice. Okay. I may I might just do that. If I build a town hall now, gives me a dice. Um, I could take primarily because I could take a gray and blacks, then take an extra gray. Or brown. Uh, train station point, but yeah, I'm gonna do town hall. I know I need more black. Go and take a gray. Take two blacks. I'm trying to get 
keep from my second pile getting below to two or less so I don't trigger the end game yet. Okay, one, six, one. Okay, well this is easy enough because uh, the town hall wants all different numbers. So we have a six, five, three, one, and a two. It can be built like that. Now do I put it? Uh, let's see, that needs three. Here we go. That's corner. One, two points if I put it there, in that upper corner. I put it here, could score one, two points, but no alley. I could go up here, one, two, three, but black, one space there, so we'll try not to put it across that. Uh, the hotel is too wide, too tall. It would work really well over here. Gives me two alleys, opposite of that set. So you get two points here, but won't score the too high there yet, so I think that back corner is going to be my easiest scoring option. No alleyway, but it'll be okay. Town hall op opposite end of the town as the church, it happens. Okay, so that gains me an immediate die of black, gray, or brown. Now if I take a black, that puts black at two or less. So it's either I take the gray or I take the brown. Um, ultimately, I'm probably not... I'm going to take the gray now. Because it doesn't make a change on that. And then, uh, flip a card, roll the surveyor dice, and hopefully the hotel is still in play. Five, okay, five, nothing happens. And I'm gonna take the hotel. Uh, from this row, I'm gonna take gold, which when I build this, It's going to trigger in game because of how many gold I have to use. So let me back up and not take it just yet. Let me think if there's a better play and hope and keep the hotel in play for one more round. The well would use two brown, but I could take any color. I think no matter what I take this round, I'm going to end up with not enough dice left. Because I have to take three dice. If I take two gold and a black, I can return a black. That's still too old down there. No. Yeah, I just have to go hotel. And hopefully I can solve it. Okay, so I'm going to take three gold. Uh, three, five, six. That's going to hurt. I'm going to do this. Um, and then because I know I can turn in any... Well, that won't even score me unless I... Uh, just do it. Because it's church. Wouldn't uh, church which call me two points six total. Oh, it may be better off to build the church if I have the black to do it less there. Uh, it's, probably should have thought this way before I just took the card, but I would have taken all the gold anyway. 
Uh, yeah, let's see what would have happened if I built the church instead. Uh, still would have taken those gold, still would have rolled them. I have the black. I'm going to turn in two gray to get a gold. Roll it, come on. Two, okay. And now I need to manipulate and hopefully get what I need. If not, it's going to be a rough final round. Well, I can at least use the power to flip the six to a one. And then currently we're at four, nine. Use this power to turn that down by one to two for a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven or less, just barely. So I don't have to take any negatives. So now I need to build this in town. Let me make sure where I'm going to build it. Three wide, black base. I could get two points here, no alleys. I build here, one, two, three. I'll try that. And then verify the rule on if there's nothing built there, if it still counts as different. Because I create an alley. And then I might score points for it being different on the dueling. Uh, but now that I have uh, two sets of dice with two or less in the piles, we're going to go to scoring. I want to make sure how the dueling streets scores if you don't have dice across from it. Currently see it, so we'll. But I did build that so that I can score, score for me. Let's get the scoring pad and just go over scoring. Then I'm gonna move the dice tower, and let's see what we score with. Okay, so let's spread these all out. To show everything I made and how we'll score them. So this score sheet has a place for your name. So for your horse, um, the bonus secret objective was pickaxes. So we had one, two, two. So that's gonna be two points, one point for each. And then buildings, that is uh, the points at the top of these cards for the buildings that you completed. So we have three plus three is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10 plus six is 16, plus six is 22, plus six is 28 on building cards. Uh, gold objective, that's the uh, gold-based objective cards. So the first one we were going for was sets of all four symbols. So uh, uh, we have two pickaxes, uh, two hats, three boots, Three horseshoes, so we have two sets total, so that's going to be 12 points for that one. And this is a point for each of the tall cactuses in the background of these photos. So I have one, two. So that was 14 for gold objectives. Now my main street scoring. First off, we get a point for every uh, building location that matches what it wanted. For example, this one wanted a gold base, so that's a point. This one wanted three tall, so that was not a point. This two tall, so that's a point, so we're at two. And then three for a gray base, uh, four for a single, 
five because it's two, six because brown. So we're at six points for that side of the street. But we did not have an alleyway on this side. Now we have one alley over here for a point. So we're at seven. This is completely different. Uh, base color and height than over here. So that makes it eight. I could not find in the book verifying. I believe it, so it just says height oops, and first level die color that are different from place die directly across from it. Um, since we don't have a placed die, I'm not going to count those points. Um, but it does count for an alley. So we said what we were already at eight. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then nine for being different. 10, 11, 11 on our street. Uh, penalty tokens, we have none. And then other, if we, if we, uh, there are other uh, scoring potential options, uh, be it expansion cards or anything like that is what you would add here. And we add it up. So two plus 28 is 30 plus 12 is 42 plus 2 is 44 plus 11 is 55. So let's see how that compares on um, the solo scoring chart. So use the scoring chart from the no outlaw scoring solo variant above uh, when playing solo surveyor. So the 55 points falls into the, the third of uh, four possible levels. If, you, if we had scored less than 45 points, uh, you've built up Tumbletown, but it's practically a ghost town. No one wants to stay for some reason. Could it be your fault? Well, there aren't many other people to blame. Uh, we did much better than that. So the next level up would be 45 to 54. Tumbletown is slowly growing. Residents are moving in, but you'll really have to work if you want to be reelected for another term. And then the next step up is 55 to 64, which we got 55. So this is where we fall into just barely jump, uh, making this level. Tumbletown is definitely on the rise. You're well liked by the residents and someone even named their horse after you. That's definitely something. You might know a thing or two about constructing a town. And then if we had scored 65 or more points, uh, the highest level would be Tumbletown is indeed the place to be. Settlers are coming in from all over, and they're even named the saloon after you. Um, there's extra content. There's additional content for Tumbletown, including scenarios located on the website, of course, uh, weirddraftgames.com slash Tumbletown slash extras. So be sure to go check that out if you're interested in learning more, playing different scenarios and such. So thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hopefully, hopefully this was informative and enjoyable to learn about. And as always, play games and spread joy.